Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and I will be showing you how to create this laptop. So first of all I'm just going to apologize in advance if there's any background noise I can't cut out. I've just recently arrived in the Philippines to study abroad as well as to help out with some churches in the general community. So, uh, hoping that they don't start the karaoke in the middle of this tutorial, let's get started. So to start off, I'm just going to delete everything. And then we can start adding in our background images. Now the hardest part of this tutorial was finding some decent background images that I could actually display in a video tutorial. But I have found them. You can download them directly off of BlenderPassion.com or you can go to AllFreeDownload.com. There will be links in the description below. And if you go to the top and click on the Vectors tab, you can just search MacBook and you will find all of these images right there as in Vector SVG format. You'll need a program such as Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator to open them up and then save them as a PNG at whatever resolution you wish. Now I'm just going to save it in my tutorial folder here. Let's see, how about laptop tutorial. So to start off I'm just going to add a plane here. I'm going to go into top view and hit control 2 to add a subsurf modifier. We're going to bump it up to 3 on the render and check optimal display. Then we can tab into edit mode and start to scale it up a bit so we can shape the base of our laptop. So now we're going to start adding in our edge loops. And if we do it two at a time and then scale along the x-axis we get a more symmetrical look and we'll do the same for the y-axis here so now I'll just continue to position these edge loops just so they look quite nicely Now if we bring this up to match our side view, and then we're going to extrude it down, and then select everything and hit Ctrl N to make the normals consistent and remove those shading artifacts. And now we're going to add some more edge loops in here. Actually, we're going to make the keyboard here, and since the edge loop is already that close, I'm just going to move it up a bit. And now if we add two more here, we're going to scale it along the x-axis. And then if we select our face here, we're going to extrude it down a bit to make an indentation for our keyboard. Now we're going to add in a few edge loops to better define the indentation. And a couple on the Y axis. And I'm just going to make sure everything lines up correctly. So I'll add in an edge split modifier. And that will help us with some of the artifacts from the subsurf modifier on the more flatter areas. So now I'm going to add in a plane and we're going to work on the actual keys of our keyboard now. So 
So we'll scale that down a bit, go into edit mode, and position it on our first key here. It is very important that everything lines up correctly because we'll be using this same reference image as our texture. And if everything doesn't line up correctly, you're going to have some weird texture artifacts. Now after this first key, I'm just going to start speeding through this process here. You really don't want to watch me do all of these keys and waste all your time. So now I'm going to select the key and we're just going to bring back our laptop base and we're going to extrude it out just to give it some sort of depth. We're going to make all our adjustments on our first key here before duplicating it across for the other keys. So now I'll select the top and bottom edges here and to save on a few vertices and polygons we're going to add in a mean crease here just to give it that nice flat look on the sides So now I'm just going to work on what I believe to be the speakers of this laptop. I'm going to take a couple edge loops that are already there, move them over, add another one, and do the same to the other side. I'll just move that one over, add another edge loop, and bring this edge loop up. And we'll bring this one down just to match our speakers here. Now we can select the faces, and we're just going to extrude those down to give a bit of indentation. Now we'll add a couple edge loops to define them, and a few on the y-axis. And the same thing to the other side. So now we're going to work on the power button here. This edge loop is already pretty much in place. So we're going to add another one on the other side. And two more for the top and bottom here. Now we can select the face. We're going to extrude that down. And maybe add in an edge loop here. Somewhere. It doesn't look all that good right now, but if we bump up the view to 3, we'll see that everything looks nice and smooth. And that's what we'll be rendering on. So now we're going to work on the mouse pad. And we're going to add in another edge loop. And a couple more here. Select the face. And again, we're just going to extrude that downwards. Maybe not so much since it's only a little mouse pad. Then we're going to add in a couple edge loops. And two more.
So now we're going to duplicate our space bar, separate it, and this will be the mouse keys for our mouse pad. And we're just going to position it accordingly. Make sure it's centered. And scale it down a bit. And then if we add an edge loop, press V. And we can just split those vertices up and we're going to position them to put a little space in between them. Now we're going to select the faces here. We'll actually create faces here. And select this edge loop. And then we're going to add in a crease there. And the bottom edge loop as well. Then we can add an edge loop here. And we're going to do the same to the other side. and an edge loop. So now I'll scale it down a bit more just to get something that looks proportional. So now we're going to add a plane and this will be for our screen. So apparently our vector image isn't completely orthographic so I'm going to have to improvise a little here. And we're just going to try to position it to the best of our abilities here. And generally the size of the screen should match the size of our laptop base. So that's what I'll be going off. And we're going to extrude it back a bit. Add in a subsurf modifier. And add in a few edge loops. Now if we select the face here, we're just going to extrude that back slightly, just to give our screen a little more depth. Now I'm just going to start adding in the edge loops here. And on the z-axis, So now I'm going to shade it all smooth and move it back a bit. Now if we tab into edit mode, select everything, we're just going to position it right on the origin there. And this will give us a pivot point. Well actually, if I position it a little better, it should give us a pivot point on which to hinge our laptop screen on. So I'll select the back here, and then we're just going to scale that in slightly, just to give a bit more quality and uh, detail. So now we're going to select the bottom of our laptop base, move it up a bit. 
and we're going to extrude that down and scale down the extrusion. And we're going to add in a couple edge loops here. So now you can see our screen is a little messed up. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to select everything and simply scale it along the x-axis until it meets our laptop base. So now we're going to work on some of the materials. We're going to select the top faces of our keyboard. And we're just going to go into top view. And hit U and project from view. And then we can open up the UV editor. And then open up our top view image. We're just going to position these keys right on the keyboard there. And since we modeled these out exactly to scale, we can just simply scale in our keyboard to match it. This is just finicky, tedious work, but the more time you spend on this, the better looking your texture will be. So now we're going to start creating the material for our keyboard. I'm just going to name it keyboard here. And I forgot to go into cycles. That's kind of weird. So I'll just delete everything, start fresh. Add in, let's see, texture coordinate node I know we'll need. Of course, a vector mapping node. And our image texture. Connect the UV slot. Now we're going to add in a mix shader. a diffuse and then a glossy shader actually that's a glass shader there's the glossy shader and bump down the fac value to something really low some arbitrary value So now I'll just move these nodes over and duplicate our mapping node here. And we're going to add a noise texture here. And then we're going to change the viewport color to something more noticeable. and add in a few light sources. We're going to do a few test renders of our keyboard material here. And for some reason it's not showing up. And that's because I simply did not connect this to the material output node.
change the emission a bit. And you can see we have these little texture artifacts at the edges. That's because the mapping wasn't correct and accurate enough. But that's fine. It does give our keyboard a more uh, specular look. So now I'm just going to add in a bump node. And stick this into the vector input socket. And start connecting up these nodes here. And we're going to connect the bump output to the normal inputs of our shaders here. And you can see we have our effect. We have a bit of discoloration. But it's a little large, so I will bump up the scale value of our noise texture. And now it's obviously way too strong, so I'll bump down the strength of our bump node. So now I'm going to show you a little trick I learned from Kentramel at BlenderCookie.com. And basically what this does is exclude all but the camera rays from calculating the bump displacement. So essentially your image will render faster with virtually no change in appearance. So now when we render this, we notice that there is no bump, and that's simply because I have the wrong slots in the color 1 and color 2 inputs. So I'll switch that around, and you can see our bump is back here. And I'm going to add a new material. And this material will be the side edges of our keys. So now I will press Control I to invert our selection. And then pr press Control Numpad Plus and then that will just select all of our edges. Now just start putting together our material. I want something that really matches the top. So now we'll add our keyboard edge material to our mouse buttons. And now we're going to select the faces underneath our keyboard. And almost there. And I'm just going to put the node editor down here. Find it more convenient. So I'm going to add a new material. And I'm going to name this laptop base. And then add another material. 
and this will be for the material that is under our keyboard and I'll assign those faces that we selected. Now I'm going to select the laptop base and we're just going to give this a mixed shader, diffuse, and a glossy. And I'm going to go to and try to get some kind of silvery look. Keep in mind I'm not taking too much time to stress over all the minute details of these materials. They're not going to be as good as they were in the finished result. However, you can check them out in the finished result just by simply downloading the dot blend directly off of blenderpassion.com. Now I'm going to select our mouse pad here. And make sure to select the corner faces. And I'm just going to assign that to the keyboard under material. Now we'll add a new material to our laptop screen. And another material under that. So now we're going to start setting up our material for the screen. We're going to go with the standard diffuse glossy and mix shader setup and then add in another mix shader and then an emission node. And we're going to connect these up. Now we're going to add an input texture coordinate node and a vector mapping node. And then an image texture. Make sure you select the UV output and put that into the vector input of our mapping node. Now we'll select our screen. And I'm going to connect the color output of our image texture to the color inputs of our shaders. Now we'll go to the UV image editor and we're just going to unwrap our uh, screen here. And open up the image you want to use. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm, no, it's not that one. I'll grab the other one. There we go. So now we'll start scaling up our UVs here, and we're going to position them. In this case, a bit of stretching is fine, so I'm going to scale it along the y-axis. And we still need to select the image texture right over here. 
And there we go. And we can see those nice reflections coming off of our glossy shaders. So now I'm going to work on the screen edges here. Create a new material from the laptop base, rename it, and we're going to change the colors a bit. So now I'm going to start adding in the real lighting. I'll scale down our laptop and bring it down to the grid floor. Add in a plane and we're going to go with the standard backdrop I use quite a bit. And we're going to add in a few loop cuts. And we're going to make sure that it fits within our camera view. So now we're added in our light source here, which is going to be a circle and fill type of triangle fan. I'm going to add in a new material and change that to emission. And give it a nice bluish tint. Now we'll change our world settings to an environment texture. And we're going to add in our HDRI map. And that'll just give us nice, smooth, interesting reflections and lighting. And we'll give our backdrop a nice dark color. Going to bump down the strength of our world shader. Or the world lighting, I guess. And bump down the strength of our light there too. Well, that's looking pretty good. As long as I can't see the HDRI map. Going to add in our camera. And rotate our screen back a bit. And then position our camera. And we're going to zoom out a bit and rotate it along the X axis. Now I'm going to rotate our backdrop to face our camera. And start changing the render settings. And we're going to give that a quick render. Add a whole 10 samples. And 
I'm going to bump down the strength. And change the strength of our light source here as well. And give that another render. And that's pretty much it. So, if this tutorial has helped you in any way, please subscribe. It really does help. You can download the finished project at BlenderPassion.com, and thank you for watching.